So one of the useful things we'll be able to do is to find the square root of an integer mod n. And a definition for square roots is the same as we have for the integers. If the square of y is congruent to k, then we say that y is the square root of k mod n. And as with square roots among the integers, not all numbers have square roots. So it would be nice to have some way of identifying whether a number had a square root and if the square root existed to find what that square root is. And as usual, the starting point is our fundamental theorem, the Euler-Fermat theorem. If two numbers are relatively prime and phi of n is the Euler phi function, then a to the power phi of n is going to be congruent to 1 mod n. Now, we're particularly interested in the case where n is a prime number. So in general, in that case, phi of n is just going to be n minus 1. And so I have a to the power n minus 1 congruent to 1 mod n. Now, if n is prime, in general, with one exception, it will be an odd number. And so that means that n minus 1 will be even. And that means n minus 1 over 2 is going to be some integer. And so let's think about that. Suppose a square root exists. Suppose that y squared congruent to k mod n actually has a solution. Now, if I raise both sides to power n minus 1 over 2, guaranteed to be an integer, then I get y to this and k to the same thing. And over on the left-hand side, I get y to the power n minus 1. And I know from our fundamental theorem, our Euler-Fermat theorem, that anything to the power n minus 1 is going to be congruent to 1. So that tells me that k to the power n minus 1 over 2 is going to be congruent to 1. And joining our starting point, y squared congruent to k has a solution to our ending point. k to the power n minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1 gives us a useful result. If y squared equals k mod n has a solution, then k to the power n minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1. So for example, let's take a look at the problem y squared congruent to 17 mod 23. And so we might make the following chain of arguments. If this has a solution, then 17 to the power 23 minus 1 over 2 will be congruent to 1. And we can check to see if this is true. So evaluating that, that's 17 to the 11, that's 22. And well, what does this tell us? This says that this is not congruent to 1. So we take our contrapositive. If this has a solution, then this is congruent to 1. If this is not congruent to 1, this has no solution. Now let's take a look at another example. So again, if y squared e congruent to 31 has a solution, then 31 to the power 83 minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1. So we'll check it. And we find it's congruent to 1. And since 31 to the power 41 is congruent to 1, we know at 34 to the power 41 is congruent to 1. Our result is that if the congruence has a solution, then k to the power n minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1. It does not tell us what we get if k to the power n minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1. In general, remember, we cannot rely on the truth of the converse of a statement. It might be true. It might not be true. However, we are in luck this case because we can actually prove the converse. And so this gives us what's known as the Euler criterion. Let n be a prime number greater than 2. y squared congruent to k mod n has a solution if and only if k to the power n minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1. So we saw that if we had a solution, we knew this was true. We also, in this one particular case, not in general, but in this one particular case, uh, we know the converse is also true. That if this congruence is true, then this congruence has a solution. And all we have to do at this point is figure out what that solution is.